Hello there. I'm going to talk about an experience I had as a child in Rhodesia during the war. And a lot of the time that I was as a child, I remember the flag. And in fact, I've got a flag here that I wanted to show you. Um, let's just get it ready here. Here it is. This here is the Rhodesian flag. Um, there you go. There it is. Notice the green for agriculture. The Zimbabwean bird, the sable antelope supporting the pioneers and the origins of the UK and Latin for togetherness. Well, I was a child, I was born into a, a war that had already started in the 60s. And I wanted to talk today about a, a title called Crocodile Creek. That's an alliteration. But Crocodile Creek has emotive connotations to the, to the words because it has a semblance of power and tranquility. And that is what, is, what we call an oxymoron. The difference between power and peace, if you like. And the paradox is that of life and death. So I'm going to talk about an exciting boy's story of the war in Rhodesia. And this Crocodile Creek was actually a real place. And it was Hugh Fennell's coffee farm, which was a vast, beautiful farm in a very nice area, mountainous area. And the creek was a farm dam. And of course, crocodiles used to migrate across the land and enter the creek. And these are like big reptiles that lumber along between waters. And the coffee that was grown there was enormous bushes and had lots of red berries. And they often hid the, what we call the Makandanga, which is a pseudonym for the guerrilla soldier. Um, and if I actually wrote a story about um, Crocodile Creek, I'll quickly share one of the images. Um, there we go. All right. Uh, should be coming up. There you go. There's Crocodile Creek Treehouse. And that's one of the books I've written. Okay. And other books I've also written um, include um, the following. So let me share them at this time. Another one should come in up any second day for you. Um, it's the flame lily weeps. They can buy it in numerous springs. So uh, our national flower there. And let's share some others. Okay. Moldings of Chapinga, and this is the area I grew up in. This is a farm. Okay. Huge mountains in the background, but vast area of farmland. Okay. Share another. Another book I wrote about our dog, the three legged dog called Present, and illustrated book of this dog in Africa. And in fact, this dog was on the farm when it was attacked, which I shall be sharing with you in a minute. Okay, another, other, um, Shares I, I should show you at this point include the other lead web link about this, the Lulu Press, where I've written lots of books. Um, and you can find it at Life in the Bush. And there are lots of books that you can see there. Okay. Um, move down a bit, you can see the many books that are written over the years. Um, it goes on and on and on, okay? And they're very interesting about life in Africa. 
Okay, both autobiography, historical, educational, um, poetic, cultural, and the humor. So if we go back to the story Crocodile Creek, well, background to it. It was on Christmas Eve 1978 that I was very excited, and as a young boy, I was excited because it was Christmas time, and it'll be that time of cheer, lots of life, Christmas lights, Christmas tree, lots of uh, guests or visitors, nice food, a celebration time, of course, and there were lots of Christmas carols being sung. So indeed, at the farmhouse of Hugh Pennell's farm, there were lots of friends and farmers present. Uh, they were all intent on seeing the night through and welcoming there was a welcoming a spirit of Father Christmas amongst the children. He was actually St. Nicholas, and he, of course, delivers presents to those children who have been good during the year. But just as I got into bed at approximately five past six in the evening, there was suddenly two terrific, enormous bangs. And indeed, an RPG had just been fired into a farm, the doors of the farm store. And this farm store was a delightful place that sold sweets, clothes, food, etc. Remember one shirt there costing 25 cents. So one dollar could buy me four shirts of very good quality. Sweets were a quarter cent, so with one cent I could buy four sweets. And there were lots of delights of glee inside that shop. And indeed, one could say that's a metaphorical um, assonance of recollection. The RPG was, another RPG was also aimed at the farmhouse, possibly from two RPG um, soldiers. And it left its, its exit pipe at 100 kilometers an hour and in the process released its guiding fins accelerating to 300 kilometers an hour and then finally to approximately 900 kilometers an hour depending on wind wind um, resistance etc and it was a great rocket guiding itself towards its target as a simile it came over the roof of this farmhouse like a jet fighter with a great whistle the noise was, was as if a aeroplane had just flown over the roof. The party, of course, stopped immediately and all the men grabbed their guns and started firing at the security fence perimeter, fearing the terrorists were now attacking the farmstead. They used Uzis, FN rifles, 45 mil pistols, shotguns and 22s. 22 rifles. The din of the shots was terrific and we children leapt out of bed and hid under the bed. It was scary. But as soon as it had started, as soon as it had started, it then ended and there was sudden silence. In the morning, there were buckets and buckets of collected cartridges that were picked up. And I was astonished at how many expended cartridges there were. And there were breaks in the wire security fence, as well as skid cuts on tree trunks from the bullets fired by the, the farmers at the house. The Zandla guerrillas had, of course, slunk away, facing such a resistance from the farmers. Present, our three-legged dog was safe and barking at the, at the noise, and he was fearless, and a Labrador cross, I wrote another book about him which I showed you earlier. The RPG that missed us was probably traveling for another one and a half to two kilometers before it would have self-detonated. However, we never heard it explode because it went over the roof of the house and then into a dense forest 
down the side of a ravine. Perhaps it came to rest in the tree tr treetops in the valley. Or rhetorically, maybe the valley absorbed the boom during its explosion. It was never found. The farm store was very sadly blown up and the roof of the farm store was completely blown off. I remember the corrugated iron sheetings of the roof scattered everywhere. There was a huge black scorch mark up the front of the store and marks on the walls from the shrapnel of the impact of the rocket. And all the delights, clothes, sweets, etc. food were completely destroyed. Um, so this was a experience that I experienced personally as a child during the Rhodesian War on a farm in Chipinga. And I've sort of written about my experiences, but I'd also like to have shared them in the video with you today. Of course, I'm the sole copyright holder of the books and the content thereof, and indeed the content of this YouTube video and all my YouTube videos. The copyright belongs to me. For further information, please email me at lowercase rg cooper uk at yahoo.com rg cooper uk one word at yahoo.com and my books can be found at lulu press limited and numa springs press limited and i think it's great that a lot of the as an ending a lot of the old rhodesian soldiers and including on both sides the rhodesian forces and the zipra's on the left side giving their accounts of their experiences and that sort of is historically important of course and we should never regate or ignore our history so in in summary i've described crocodile creek an alliteration for a delightful farm a farm that survived the and a, a deadly attack and is still to this day farming coffee so with that, I wish you a great festive preparation of 2020 in spite of, the, in spite of the coronavirus pandemic and all the very best. So take care. Bye.